ever been a time to where in your business you made a major investment or as a strategic decision that didn't go as planned, how was it handled? And what lessons, <laughs> what, what lessons did you learn? I'm not gonna lie, I, I have a perfect example, right? S scenario story, but does it have to be business or can it just be like an investment? Investment, talk okay. to me, talk to me. I've been waiting to get this one. <laughs> <laughs> so 2021, 2021, 2022, there was this investment group. Mind you, this is why I have a thing about fake gurus. Mm. I'm not going to say any names, but this is why I have a thing about fake gurus, right? Okay. There was this investment group in Dallas to where, um, you know, 2021, everybody had access to capital because of the pandemic, mm -hmm. PPP loan, et cetera. So this is an investment group to where they basically preyed on small business owners, entrepreneurs, people who had a little extra cash that wanted to invest and you know, generational wealth. For sure. Right, so there was an opportunity to where you invest um, eight to $9,000 into container homes, right? Mm -hmm. So their thing was like investing in these new container homes. Um, you, you, you can be considered a real estate investor. Uh, these container homes, you're paying for the labor and the materials, and then you get 50% return on your investment, right? Mm -hmm. so let's say you pay 8,000, in 60 days, you're guaranteed 4,000, right? Mm. So you pay eight to get 12 every 60 days, right? Because my friends were doing it, they were actually making money, they showed me the wires, showed me, I'm like, cool. I trusted them, For right? Sure. Which, sure. they got scammed too, right? Dang. So, I did it, and it worked, I'm not gonna lie, it worked. Okay. I, I did it a couple times, put in eight, I got my eight plus four, I put in 16, got in 16 plus eight. So I'm like, cool. A couple of my friends were like, hey, how can I get on? I'm like, hey, it worked. I'm going to put you on, right? Um, basically, it was a Ponzi scheme, man. Like, basically, there, there were no containers. Um, I ended up losing $100,000. Oh, KG. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I lost $100,000. Uh, I mean, it was basically everything I had saved. Everything I had saved. Granted, I got some money back for, like, the first couple of months. So maybe, like I said, maybe I lost, like, 80 or 75. But still, I lost a lot of money. And I'm due, like, 116000 what they actually owe me, right? Now, from that investment, there's a couple of things I learned. One, regardless of what people say, contracts don't matter. Oh, wow. Regardless of what people say, contracts don't matter. You can have a contract, but if they don't have the money to pay you or everybody, you're not getting your money back. So the contract is void. It's, like, it's, it's, it's pointless. Ooh. So that's one thing I learned. Second thing I learned, if it sounds too good to be true, it is. Mm. Right? If somebody's saying, oh, you're going to get, 50, we're guaranteeing you 50%. Mm. All you got to do is sign this contract. It's too good to be true. How are you going to guarantee me half my money back, right? So, I mean, well, my whole money back plus 50% profit. The second thing. Third thing, for me, I will never invest in something I can't physically touch outside of stocks. Mm. Right? Stocks, the, uh, stocks is something different. But if I can't physically go in to touch it, so for example, if I want to get into real estate, if I can't go walk that land, if I can't go touch that property, I'm not investing in it. Because essentially what I did was bro, I took $100,000 and just lit it on fire. Man. So yeah, those, those, that was the hardest lesson I ever learned in my life because it's like, sometimes I wake up and my stomach hurts. Because like, dang, this is gone, right? Oh. But. It's my fault because I didn't do my complete due, dil due diligence, right? I thought, one, because I had a contract, and two, because my friends did it, and I saw wire transfers that it was, you know, legitimate. I also talked to the guy on the phone, had his number, but when things went downhill, he was nowhere to be found. Mm. Kind of find out there was multiple people he scammed in the past. Kind of find out there's multiple groups, all right? So we're putting, this group of 60 entrepreneurs is putting their money to him. There's another group of 20 here, a group of 30 there. So he's taking their money, paying us, taking our money, paying them. And it got to a point where everybody wanted money back. He didn't have the money. Ooh. 